What's up, guys? Brett Apple here from DailyFanMMA.com, back with another UFC Quick Picks on the Mayo Media Network. We have UFC 276 on Saturday, Adesanya versus Cannoneer in the main event. Volkanovski versus Holloway, the co-main event, 12 fights on the slate, and a lot of fun fights scattered throughout the card. I mean, some of my favorite fights on this slate aren't even the main or the co-main event. Strickland versus Pereira is fire. Lawler, Barbarena, Munoz, O'Malley, Riddell Turner. There are a lot of, of very good matchups. I think it's going to be an awesome event. A lot of money to be won on DraftKings. As usual, I'm here to give you my favorite cash game play of the week, tournament play of the week, salary play of the week, and I'm going to talk about another tournament matchup that I like as well. Before I get into those, make sure you subscribe to the Mayo Media Network. So much great content coming out throughout the week, not just for UFC, but in a lot of other sports as well. Please like the video and let me know who's going to come home with the belts on Saturday. We got two championship matchups, main and co-main. Would love to hear who you think is going to finish off the night uh, with their hands raised and those championship belts. So Without further ado, I'm going to move into my cash game play of the week, which is going to be Alexander Volkanovsky at 9K. All right, let's move on to my cash game play of the week, Alexander Volkanovsky at 9K, uh, the favorite in the co-main event over Max Holloway. This is the trilogy fight. Volkanovsky's obviously won the first fight and the rematch. Volkanovsky is minus 190 for the trilogy on Saturday, and I really like his price of 9K. And, and we've talked about Volkanovski, you know, a lot on this show. He's one of the best round winners in the sport. Just a, a brilliant technical fighter, um, both on the feet and on the mat, averaging 6.63 significant strikes landed per minute, 3.32 absorbed per minute, 60% striking defense that's very strong obviously we have a large sample considering he and holloway fought both uh, twice already and in those matchups he scored 103 and 94 points and it's actually arguably like a little bit of a disappointment considering his last two wins against uh, the korean zombie and brian ortega he put up 133 and 136 DraftKings points so he has a ton of upside historically but Holloway's a tougher matchup and he hasn't produced to that same top end level but in cash games I really don't think it matters I would take a 100 point score from Volkanovski on this slate in cash games for this price you can argue to make the play up to Adesanya 9.4k Sean O'Malley 9.3k Andre Muniz 9.2k but I think there's more risk for, to bust there Adesanya you know doesn't throw strikes at as high of a rate doesn't wrestle at all and has put up kind of a bunch of stinkers recently so there's I think less safety in Adesanya um, even in a win this week Sean O'Malley has upside but you know only three rounds to work with not really going to wrestle and uh, there's a risk there as well still $300 more expensive than Volkanovski and Andre Muniz um could win by early submission, and if not, he's not really going to score any points. So Volkanovski is very, very safe. I mean, both in terms of his uh, ability to win this fight, minus 190. We don't really need him to win inside the distance. He's plus 310, but he has volume upside, has landed 157 and 137 significant strikes in the first two fights against Holloway. Also landed three takedowns in the most recent fight. I expect him to use wrestling once again to a degree, and... The good thing is, even in a loss, this fight is still likely to go the distance. Uh, minus 245 starts round five. Minus 225 goes the distance. So if Max Holloway wins, which I do think is possible, I would still expect it to be a competitive decision. And Volkanovski scoring you know, 70 points, 60 points in a loss won't kill you as well, especially if you have Holloway in cash. Uh, which I expect many will at 7.2K. So uh, one of my favorite fights on the slate, both from a cash game and tournament perspective, less certain about needing the winner in tournaments because there's a lot of good options on the slate. But, you know, I think you kind of stack them up in cash games and especially on the Volkanovski side at 9K, he makes for a great, great option. So Volkanovski will be my cash game play of the week. 
Moving on to tournaments, I would like to talk about Sean O'Malley at 9.3K. Again, this is a competitive range with the names I've already talked about, Adesanya, O'Malley, Muniz, Barber, Volkanovski, and there's a handful of strong options priced below them as well. I don't think O'Malley is going to be like the most popular fighter on the slate, especially considering the strength of this range. And I already talked about briefly the the bust risk he has, given that this is a three-round fight given that he's not likely to wrestle against Pedro Munoz. Um, there's a chance he just wins by decision, lands 100 significant strikes, wins cleanly, and scores, whatever, 70 points in a win. That's possible, and that would not score enough for him to be competitive with the optimal lineup. We're looking for a big score here. And it's an interesting dynamic because Pedro Munoz has never been finished in 26 pro fights. So... Projecting O'Malley to win by knockout is not necessarily fair, but he is plus 135 to win inside the distance. And I think, I mean, he's going to hit Munoz in the head a lot. Uh, O'Malley's averaging 8.26 significant strikes landed per minute, and Munoz is absorbing north of six significant strikes per minute. And not only that, but O'Malley is going to be five inches taller with a seven-inch reach advantage. So Munoz is not going to be able to really hit O'Malley, especially to the face early or at all in this matchup. He is going to need to close the distance like he typically does. He marches forward. He's aggressive. And that's why he gets hit a lot. And against one of the best distance strikers in the division, according to the metrics, O'Malley projects to have a lot of success here in terms of a high number of significant strikes landed and a high number of significant strikes landed to the head specifically. And when you add those two things together, yes, Munoz is very durable. I wouldn't be surprised if this fight goes to decision, but I also would not be surprised if O'Malley actually hurts him and maybe becomes the first man ever to stop Munoz. So uh, a higher percent chance of a knockdown than a TKO, but there's still some finishing upside in this matchup. And look, O'Malley just landed 230 significant strikes against Chris Mutino. So it, it's not as if O'Malley's upside is only 100 significant strikes. There's in a, in a high paced fight, an up tempo fight with an aggressive opponent and the reach advantage. In theory, O'Malley still could land a crazy number of significant strikes too. There are multiple ways for him to score very well. And in comparison to Adesanya, who just doesn't land strikes at a high rate, isn't going to wrestle, scored 85 points and 75 points in his last two five-round wins, even in the last second-round knockout, put up 102 points. I would probably rather take a shot on Sean O'Malley here for $100 cheaper. I think he has a similar chance to win by knockout and probably projects to land a higher number of significant strikes. They'll probably be relatively similarly owned across the board, but I think O'Malley has a little bit better chance uh, to hit a ceiling than Adesanya. Well, Adesanya probably needs a, a first-round knockout in theory to have any shot at the optimal lineup. So Sean O'Malley, I really like him this weekend, both for, for a degree of safety, but also for, for the upside, the high pace, high significant strike potential. Um, and he shouldn't be extremely owned compared to other fighters in this range. So I like Sean O'Malley quite a bit in tournaments this week at 9.3K. All right, let's move on to my salary play of the week. I'm going to give out Sean Strickland at 7.9K. This is one of my favorite matchups on the slate, bar none. Strickland's actually a money line favorite now, minus 117 to win. It's about pick em, but he opened. Let's see if I can find the opener. Um, plus 120 ish. I'm not sure if that's totally correct, but somewhere around that number, and he's steadily trended toward being the favorite, which I agree with. I think Strickland should be favored in this matchup especially because, well, not especially because, but the interesting dynamic of this matchup is that Strickland should be a considerably better wrestler and grappler than Alex Pereira, who's a high pedigree kickboxer, famously knocked out Israel Adesanya. Pereira is only like five and one as a pro in mixed martial arts. His only loss in mixed martial arts was by submission 
even in a very recent fight in the UFC, he was out grappled by Andreas Michalidis, uh, a pretty low level opponent, I would say. And Strickland's a, a, a capable wrestler, a brown belt in jiu-jitsu. And if Strickland decides to wrestle here, I definitely think he's going to have some degree of success. It may not translate into a, a clear win, but it also may allow him to dominate this matchup. And the thing is, even on the feet, I really do think Strickland can compete with Pereira. That might be a hot take just because of Pereira's pedigree. And Pereira is a, a brilliant offensive pinpoint striker, excellent combinations. You know, Strickland will be in danger of getting knocked out, of course. But Strickland defends strikes very, very well, especially to the head. 65% striking defense. And he's very experienced, excellent cardio, throw strikes at a high rate, 5.53 significant strikes landed per minute. Striking is so high variance that, you know, Pereira, while so experienced in kickboxing, just doesn't have that many MMA fights. And he kind of ate a lot of head strikes in his last fight against Bruno Silva. Even if Strickland doesn't wrestle, I still think there's some path to victory for him in a competitive decision or even by knockout. But at 7.9K, considering there's also the chance for him to wrestle and potentially dominate on the ground, I think it's a I think it's a good option on DraftKings. I think he has quite a bit of upside, plus 275 to win inside the distance, plus some knockout upside, plus volume striking, plus wrestling and grappling. And he's now the favorite on the money line, 7.9K. I'm willing to take a chance on Sean Strickland there as my salary play of the week. And of course, I will have exposure to Pereira in tournaments too at 8.3K. He's plus 150 to win inside the distance. More of a boomer bust target, but it's a matchup that I think we should be pretty exposed to across the board. All right, and finally, I want to talk about another fight that I am targeting in tournaments. That's Jalen Turner versus Brad Riddell. I've kind of enjoyed giving out these, these fights as opposed to the fate of the week, although maybe I will come back to that one day. Macy Barber is probably who I would choose at 9.1K, but... You know she still has upside. I don't. I don't. You know she's going to be a contrarian option, low owned. That's who I would give out if I had to pick someone. But I would rather talk about Jalen Turner and Brad Riddell on this slate, which is another amazing fight. I mean, two excellent kickboxers who are just going to stand and bang. I think for a while. And what I like about this matchup and what intrigues me about this matchup is that like Brad Riddell is very very good. He's a very good kickboxer coming from that same city kickboxing camp as Volkanovski and Adesanya, land strikes at a high rate, 4.76 per minute, absorbing only 3.55. And I think he's a decent wrestler too, landing 1.8 takedowns per 15 minutes. He's landed a takedown in each of his five UFC fights, and he landed five takedowns against Drew Dober. So he's a capable wrestler too. And Jalen Turner, I think, is a little bit more inexperienced um, less certain about his striking defense. It's only 44%. Less certain about his defensive grappling. But Turner is going to be a lot bigger than Riddell. Turner is 6'3", and Riddell is 5'7". And Turner has a 77-inch reach. Riddell has a 71-inch reach. And for what for what Turner may be weak in, for, for areas he may be weak in, he is fantastic at distance, at his distance. He can throw volume too. He can throw combinations too. A dangerous striker. And he's coming off, you know, what? Four finishes in the UFC in a row. Two knockouts. Um, two submissions. He knocked down Brock Weaver twice in that submission. So he's just a dangerous striker. And because he's going to be so much bigger than Riddell, at the start of this fight, I, I believe he's going to have success. Riddell just simply will not even be able to physically reach him so in order for Riddell to have any success in this fight he's going to have to close distance and in order to do that he's going to put himself in danger of getting hit by a much longer high volume combination striker in Turner so um you know Riddell coming off a knockout loss to Fizayev was hurt against Drew Dober was mildly hurt against Malarkey so I, I think Riddell's tough enough, but I do respect the offensive output of Turner to the point that I think uh, Turner winning by early KO is realistic. He's plus 110 to win inside the distance. That's a very strong line. He's somewhat boomer bust, but for 8.4K, I think Turner's a, a very strong tournament target. And Brad Riddell, 7.8K, you know, in a similar spot 
a, a Strickland to a degree. I think he can strike competitively with Turner should he be able to close the distance. Turner's been knocked out before, and Riddell has knockout upside, in my opinion, as well. And then also, Riddell can wrestle. Whether or not he does wrestle, I'm not sure, but if he's already choosing to close the distance, it's going to give him an easier path to therefore land the takedowns and, you know, put himself in an advantageous position where Turner's not going to be able to land combinations on him. So I think both sides have upside here. I think both sides have finishing upside. Riddell's only plus 310 inside the distance. That's not as good, but he's cheaper. He's 7.8K, a very effective striker, potentially just better technically than Turner everywhere. The size is really what's going to give him trouble. So I'm very interested to see how he gets past the reach of Turner, uh, how effectively and, and how much damage he takes there. But it's a matchup that I'm targeting pretty heavily on DraftKings. Minus 225 ends inside the distance one way or the other. If we get a finish at this 8.4K, 7.8K price range, Decent chance the winner is competing for the optimal lineup. So one of my favorite fights on the slate, both from a, fa a fantasy perspective and from an entertainment perspective. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this week's UFC Quick Picks. Thank you again for the support. You can follow me on Twitter at Brad Appley, double T, double P, dailyfanmma.com for all your DraftKings breakdowns needs. Just posted every single fight breakdown, multiple podcasts this week, got rankings, projections, all the good stuff. Again, thank you. Best of luck this week. Stay safe out there. Take care. We'll talk to you all soon. Peace.